broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, City Committee meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. NENA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the City of Nina Common Council meeting for Wednesday, May 18th. Please answer the clerk as she calls the roll and indicate your presence on the roll call machine. Alderperson Boyette? Here. Orchard? Here. Hillstrom? Here. Lundrum? Here. Erickson? Here. Skirms? Here. Steiner? Here. And Stevenson? Here. All are present. I will ask Alderman Lundrum to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for Item number two on the agenda is introduction and confirmation of mayor's appointments. Is there any objection to unanimous consent of those appointments? Seeing none, that's so ordered. Is there any objection to the unanimous consent of, of approval of the Common Council proceedings of the May 4th meeting? Seeing no objections, that is also approved. Welcome to uh, people who have joined us tonight. We'll now open the public forum. If anyone is interested in speaking tonight, this is your opportunity to do so. You can um, please give your name and residential address and speak for five minutes if you're interested in doing so. Is there anyone here for the public forum? Good evening, Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the Council. My name is Dwight Kerr. I live at 434 High Street in Nina. I'm here tonight uh, on behalf of some of my neighbors. Uh, we have a, I will call it a drug abusing home in our neighborhood. And Can you hang on one second, Mr. Kerr? We need to get a microphone for you. Not there? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oops. That's funny. <laughs> I'm not used to looking down at it. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Should I start over? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, my name is Dwight Kerr. I live at 434 High Street in Nina, Wisconsin. I'm here tonight on behalf of some of the people in our neighborhood. We have a home in our neighborhood that is that occupiers are abusing drugs on a fairly regular basis. Uh, since January of this year, we've had the fire department, Gold Cross Ambulance, and anywhere from two to five Muskego Police Department squad cars down in our neighborhood. And that's two in January, two in February, one so far in May. It's it seems to be a routine thing over there. Uh, I'm not sure what more we can do, but I've also heard that when Old Cross stops by there and does a Narcan injection, that they also will leave Narcan for the person if they ask for it. And I'm kind of concerned that if we do that with Gold Cross, that they are, we are encouraging them to do further drug abuse. Uh, 
uh, the residents in our in my neighborhood would like to see this taken care of somehow. Uh, I know it has to do primarily with the police department, but I think we could contact some of the contact the landlord and put some pressure onto them through the city. Uh, I don't know what else we can do, but it's it's been quite a large issue. That house is an upper and a lower. The upper is the one that has had most, if not all, of the overdoses. Uh, the lower has a single mother with two young children. Uh, she has recently went through uh, treatment. She has seems to have been clean for at least the last three months. But the upstairs seems to be the problem. Every time they come, they go up the back stairs. Anything that the common council could do, I know we've had a couple of our residents send emails to some of the members. Um, the last thing I would like to do for these young kids is to have them be home and go across, drag down a body in a body bag. I can't believe that it would do anything for our younger generation that's living there. That's about all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during the public forum? Seeing no one, I will open up the Mayor Council consideration of public forum issues. If anyone has a statement, I'll just say that I did receive an email and uh, was out of town until this afternoon, but intend to have a conversation with the police chief tomorrow regarding this issue, if that's helpful. So just so the council and so Mr. Kerr understands how our nuisance program here in the city works, um, specifically with landlord tenants, when you own the house, it becomes a little bit dif more difficult. But when there's tenants involved, if a tenant has more than three calls for service, for anything that is criminal or citable. At that point, um, Stu Zules uh, was, Officer Zules was the one in charge. I don't know if it's transferred over to Officer Benoit yet or not. Um, we're able to put them on a nuisance uh, abatement list essentially. And what that means is that we send a letter to the landlord saying, listen, we're constantly getting called out here. If you don't take care of whatever this issue is, um, you will start being find significant significant amounts of money and usually that's enough for the landlord to evict the tenant um, however drug use being high overdosing is not a crime possession of drugs is a crime overdosing on drugs is not a crime so I don't know the service calls I haven't looked into it or anything like that but just service calls for an overdose would not be enough unless there were other things happening at the same time if they were issuing citations for possession or something like that. Um, the act of, again, this is just how our laws work, um, the act of being high or overdosing is not the illegal part, it's only the possession. So the police are limited a little bit in how they can declare a nuisance property if when they go there, there's no citable or criminal offense. Um, just so everyone knows how the nuisance actions work with a landlord tenant situation. Alderman Boyette. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. I was going to mention that, but also um, just wanted to confirm that the building itself is um, rented to two separate tenants and, and not an owner is on site. Because sometimes the owners can step in and have more to do with it as well in conjunction with ED. Thanks, Dwight. Any further comments? Thank you, Mr. Kerr, for coming and uh, making us aware of that. 
Moving on, um, is there any objection to unanimous consent of the consent agenda? Seeing none, that is so ordered. Next on the agenda, um, reports of the standing committees, the regular public services and safety committee me meeting of May 10th, um, Chairman Lundrum. Thank you, Mayor. And reporting out from the regular public services and safety committee meeting of May 10th, 2022. And like I said before, I am the new chairman and uh, Alderman Hillstrom is the vice chair. Minutes can be found on the city website. Committee recommends council approve the purchase of a John Deere 324L compact wheel loader and snow push box from Brooks Tractor for a total of $89,150 with $75,000 of that coming from the 2022 capital equipment program funds to replace the 1999 tractor and the remaining $14,150 to come from the 2022 capital equipment budget funds for the pavement roller replacement. And as soon as, and I so move, and as soon as I get a second, I would like Director Kaiser to explain this motion, please. We have a second? Uh, Director Kaiser, do you mind explaining what you talked about in committee? Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, as uh, um, Superintendent Radke noted in, in his memo on this item for committee, um, the staff at the garage had looked at the uses that we make of the um, tractor that we have out there and how it fits the jobs that we are, are putting it through. Um, he had, as part of that evaluation, determined that really a, a compact wheel loader works a little better for the types of jobs we have, that some of the things we use the tractor for, or at least when we first bought it, um, we have better ways of doing it now. So uh, the compact wheel loader, it, it's kind of subtle differences. I think the committee can probably attest um, to the tractor. The the primary difference that you'll notice is the engine on the uh, compact wheel loader is on the back side of the cab. Um, that frees up space in front of the cab for the operator to see much better uh, what they're doing. It also changes that, that counterweight on the equipment. So uh, as they're lifting loads, it's bouncing less so they can um, more safely, more efficiently load the equipment, the trucks that we have out there with uh, with different supplies. So that was why we went toward the compact wheel loader. And that he switched from the asphalt roller? Oh, yes. Um, knowing that or after finding the equipment, uh, determining that it was going to be over budget, we looked at what we had in the capital equipment budget uh, for remaining equipment to uh, purchase for this year. And uh, of the items we had in there, the the roller was, I guess, our least pressing item. Asphalt the, roller. Or the asphalt yeah. roller, yeah, was our least pressing item from that list. Uh, we still would like to replace it because we are doing uh, more asphalt patching work, but, uh, and the roller we have is really too small for the kind of work we're giving it. But uh, um, we felt we can defer that till, till next year, so we'll need to budget for that in uh, 2023 and make adjustments accordingly. And he also suggested that it, there's a possibility that we might even be able to rent an asphalt roller if we need to. So that's up for discussion, too. Yes. Right. Thank you, Director Kaiser. And that is the end of my report. There is a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the purchase of this item? Seeing none, please vote yes or no on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. Item number or letter B, regular finance and personnel committee meeting of May 9th. That is Chairman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting out from the regular finance and personnel committee meeting of May 9th, 2022. The minutes can be found on the city website. Item number one, the committee recommends council approve resolution 2022-08 which supports amending the bylaws of the East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission 
to remove the gubernatorial appointments to the commission board. And I so move. Alderman Erickson moves. Is there a second? Second. I think I got it. You did. Seconded by Alderman Stevenson. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, please vote yes or no on your voting <clears throat> device. That motion passes eight to zero. Item number, number two, the committee recommends council approve the purchase of a new record management system for Dolus at a cost not to exceed $8,000 to be funded by using unspent DOLIS operating funds created by existing staff vacancies within the department, and I so move. Alderman Erickson moves. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Um, Alderman Erickson? <laughs> I would um, request that um, City Attorney um, Adam Westbrook explain what this is for. Yeah, certainly. So we currently use a program called City Law. That program is only able to be used on Internet Explorer. Um, Internet Explorer is no longer being supported um, by the city or I think by Internet Explorer. <laughs> um, in addition to that, it is staffed by, I think, two um, staff members. Uh, and it is very obsolete and difficult to use. So Amanda Peterson, my legal assistant, uh, set up demos with numerous companies and this company that we're going with called NetDocs um, is the leader in document management systems uh, stored in the cloud. And so this uh, expenditure is to migrate the data um, from the current so software to this new software. And then there will be an annual cost, but that is similar to what the current cost is. So that'll just be in the budget um, and reflect in next year's operating budget. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote yes or no on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Courts of Special Committees and Liaisons, uh, the report of the regular plan commission meeting of May 10th, Alderman Steiner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, reporting out on the planning commission meeting on May 10th to review and discuss the certified survey maps to create two new lots on the southern portion of the Bridgewood Golf Course <laughs> property. South of Cameron Way, former holes two through nine, uh, I so move for the council to approve the proposed two-lot CSM for the former Bridgewood Golf Course located along Jewelers Park Drive and Harrison Street and accept the public trail easement along former hole nine of the golf course. Alderman Steiner moves. Second. Alderman Stevenson seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote yes or no on your voting machine. That motion passes eight to zero. A second certified survey map proposed the creation of an outlot and reconfiguration of existing lots for the former Bridgewood Golf Course. Uh, move for the council okay. to approve the proposed CSM creating an outlot and reconfiguring existing lots for the former Bridgewood Golf Course located along Jewish Park Drive and Harrison Street and accepting the public access easement basin to the northern Alderman Steiner makes the motion, seconded by Alderman Borchert. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote yes or no on your voting device. That and motion passes eight to zero. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Next, uh, the Board of Public Works meeting of May 10th. Vice Chairman Hillstrom. 
Thank you, Mayor. The minutes from this meeting can be found on the city website. This evening, uh, it's a busy time, Board of Public, uh, Public Works, so there's uh, quite a few items, seven informational and one voting item. First one is the board approved past but number three, contract 7-21, Harrison Street Stormwater Pond, MCC Incorporated Appleton, in the amount of $291,121.69. Item B, the board approved past but number three, Contract 8-21, Jewelers Park Drive Trail to Vinton Construction Incorporated, Two Rivers in the amount of $371,572.22. And if you haven't been out there, the trail's almost finished and looking awesome. Uh, item C, the board approved pay estimate number two, Contract 1-22, Sanitary Storm and Water Main Construction, Apple Blossom Drive, Frederick Drive, Green Acres Lane, Honeysuckle Lane, Metal, Metal Lane, Primrose Lane, Wild Rose Lane, to Krushek Construction Incorporated of Green Bay in the amount of $775,823.84. Item D, the board approved pay estimate number one, contract 2-22, sanitary, water services, and street construction on Dekoff Street and Grove Street, uh, Donald Heppes and Sons Construction, in the amount of $179,892.14. Item E, the board approved pay estimate number one, contract 4-22, sanitary, storm, and water main construction, South Commercial Street, Robert J. Immel Excavating Incorporated in the amount of $169,073.73. Item F, the board approved pay estimate number one, contract 5-22, sanitary and storm sewer construction, County Highway CB and County Highway JJ, to DeGroote Incorporated in the amount of $272,978.17. Item G, board approved change order number three, contract 2-21, sanitary sewer, water main and street construction, Fairview Avenue and Lawton Boulevard, the Carl Bowlers and Sons Construction Company Incorporated Kakana in the amount of thirty thousand twenty-four dollars, using the remainder of the budget expense for this project. The one council action item: board recommends council approve final payment for contract two twenty-one sewer, water main, and street construction, Fairview Avenue, and Loudon Boulevard. Carl Bowlers and Sons Construction Company Incorporated Kakana in the amount of $377,687.47, and I would so move. Alderman Hillstrom moved and seconded by Alderman Borchert. Um, Alderman Skirms? I have a question, but I can ask it after this. Okay. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please vote yes or no on your voting device. That motion passes 8 to 0. That concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you for that long report. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Skirms? Uh, just a question about the Harrison Stormwater Retention Fund progress report. Are we coming on that? Not as fast as I want. <laughs> um, contractor was out there yesterday, kind of getting themselves reacquainted with the site. Um, and then we had rain this morning and I didn't see them. So um, uh, we're at the point of needing to have a talk with them, a hard talk. Okay. Thank you. Is there any report from the Community Development Authority? No report, Mayor. Is there a report from the Library Board? Thank you, Mayor. The Nina um, Public Library Board of Trustees met today at 4 o'clock, and there is a lot going on at the library. Um, the youth program sign-up for summer is underway. Um, the Nina Public Schools and schools in the area have been contacted, 
And a lot of, I think they have over a thousand kids already signed up for the summer program already. So if you're interested or know somebody who would be interested in getting more information on this, um, please contact the youth department at the library. Um, it's a very, very neat program with a special book that they will get with stickers and projects to do. Um, and so that is going on right now. Um, for the month of June, there are a lot of activities at the library. Sunrise Yoga is back. The Memory Cafe will feature fishing. Um, there's an all-ages hip-hop dance workshop. There's short story night and a not quite cozy mystery book club um, that will be um, held in, holding their meeting on Monday, June 20th. So if you are interested in finding more information out about the Nina Public Library, please visit the Nina Public Library website. Um, there is a lot going on there this summer. And that concludes my report. Thank you for your report, Alderman Erickson. Do you have a report from the Nina Arts Council? Yes. Uh, the Nina Arts Council met on Wednesday, May 11th. Um, many of our members participated in the flower beds um, uh, along Wisconsin Avenue. The library has three, the YMCA, um, Youth Go. There are a number of beds that are completed. And if you haven't had a chance to walk down, up and down Wisconsin Avenue, check out the really, really creative uh, flower beds um, on Wisconsin Avenue. Um, the Nina the Nina Schools Art Show concluded today at their their art show concluded today at the Nina Public Library. The YMCA has an art show in the lobby that will be up for a week, and we have discussed our summer activities and what projects we're going to be doing. So I will be talking to many of our council members about volunteering at one of our events, and that concludes my report. Thank you for your report, Alderman oh, Eric. One more thing. I'm sorry. S totally sorry about that. No um, youth Go is having a, in Youth Go is part of the Nina Arts Council, and they asked me to um, invite everybody to the summer open house Wednesday, June 1st, from 3 to 7. This is their first open house. And people have wondered about Youth Go, what's, what goes on there, what they have to offer. So if you have a chance um, and would like to, Wednesday, June 1st, this is open to the public from 3 to 7. Tour the center, learn about summer programming. There will be food and drinks, um, and it's everyone is welcome. So please um, visit when you have a chance. Thank you for your report. Alderman Steiner, do you have a report from the Landmarks Commission? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. The Landmarks Commission met on May 9th to review a building permit request for 106 West Wisconsin Avenue and request for a certificate of appropriateness. The property was previously used by Associated Bank for office space and is now proposed for retail use, which is more in line with its historic. The commission approved the request for a certificate of appropriateness to allow the remodeling of the That concludes my report. Thank you for your report. Any petitions? There are no petitions. Any council directives? None. Any unfinished business? Alderman Stevenson. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is unfinished business or if it's new business, but um, I did mention a couple of weeks ago that I got an invitation from the um, agencies putting on the Memorial Day Parade, and um, I did reach out to uh, uh, Council President Sevenick in Menasha, and uh, we are going to have a lease offer combined float or combined unit, if you will. And I just received tonight in my mailbox uh, confirmation that our lineup number is 32. So I will be sending out an email to either today or tomorrow to our council and sharing it with all the uh, persons, Sevenick and Menasha, with the details. We are Unit 32, and we're going to meet them on the corners of First on the south side. So I'll send all that to you. Just so you know that um, we did our, our application was received and we are we do have a unit right thank you for that good reminder any other unfinished business any new business so alderman borcher had contacted myself um 
and Chief Olson about uh, getting a, a working group together to discuss the possibility of a sex offender uh, registry um, requirements for living. So I would just like Alderman Borcher to uh, bring that up so that the council can decide who they want on that committee. Again, I don't know that a vote is appropriate today, but just to bring it up so that everyone is aware and informed so we can move forward with that. Um, there was a lot of conversation and people approached me and that there was even um, uh, Kelly Bierman had brought up a, some a resolution of sorts discussed. It seemed like there was an, a large amount of sexual predators that were relocated here in Nina. And uh, a lot of people were concerned about where they're being lo located, wanted some information about it and how often, if they're not Nina residents, why they're being put in Nina. And uh, so there was some discussion. Um, we believe there's some information on the books in Sparta. And um, <clears throat> I reached out to a couple of council members there and their city attorney just to find some information about what they did and the process to go through that. Um, and Chief Olson was very interested in proceeding with this. So um, uh, city attorney um, Westbrook said that we needed to get a, a commission together of sorts to maybe discuss what the process was. And uh, I would like that. No, so I, I think obviously Alderman Borchardt would be a part of that committee. I would just ask if any other council members feel like they want to be in, involved in that conversation of how we're drafting that ordinance to create restrictions that they reach out to Alderman Borchardt um, so that he can have the appropriate people in that meeting. Well, President Stevens. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I think it's a. Um, I think it's a, a very obviously a very worthwhile effort. I'm just wondering if we don't have an organizational structure in place already through our legislative review committee, whether that's appropriate for that or not. I don't. I don't want uh, uh, any count, any council members is obviously welcome to attend a legislative review discussion, um, and we already have a structure for that. So uh, rather than creating something new, I, I would suggest we we have a legislative review review it. And invite other council members to participate. Any other? Yeah, only because legislative review hasn't met in two years, so it's a good. Uh, additionally, an item is going to be coming uh, before council. The Winnebago County emergency plan was presented to Dean, former Mayor Coffert, before his departure. He uh, indicated that he didn't want to act on it and wanted to wait and have the new mayor act upon it. Uh, Winnebago County has now reached out to us and said, hey, what's going on? <laughs> so that will be um, probably be uh, presented next council agenda um, by the mayor. Um, so we'll try to get that out to you as soon as possible so you can review it in time to know how that emergency management plan works. It's the same one that has been in existence for a very long time. We, we, we also have an emergency government group, right? <laughs> and I don't know that, that that's an active group, but I, I, I have all, I've long thought that the, re, the response requested by the county certainly warrants participation from that group. But maybe it's just me. We we have a group, so we might as well have him a responsibility. And it's made up of the leaders, mostly department heads, and our public safety people who should be involved in in reviewing that to make sure what we're being asked to approve is a functional plan. Nope, <laughs> I don't. Capture. Uh, Chief Clone is the, I think, the chairperson. Okay. We'll get Any other new business? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Signify aye. by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, 
city committee meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents via the city website, www.ninagov.org. NINA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback.